And they're getting beaten very badly by me in the polls. Uh, they think the only way they can catch me is to stop me from speaking. They want to take away my voice. And a judge uh, gave a gag order today. Did you hear that on speech? As we all know, former President Donald Trump has a lot of complaints about the gag orders that have been issued against him as a result of his uh, commentary on social media in regard to the witnesses and the various cases he has been indicted in. Now, uh, the latest saga has to do with the election interference case uh, involving Judge Tanya Chutkin and the gag order she issued against Donald Trump in that case, which was actually very narrow in scope, but Trump didn't like it. Now, that led to a temporary freeze on the order and some internal squabbles from the Trump team. But then later, and this is the update to the story, Judge Chutkin reimposed her narrow gag order recently. Now, the gag order bars him specifically for making public comments targeting prosecutors, court staff, and potential witnesses in the case. Now, information from the initial reporting of the gag order, which was put in place on October 16th, goes as follows The gag order will prohibit all parties from statements publicly targeting special counsel Jack Smith, his staff, Judge Chutkin's staff, or any other court personnel. Statements about the families of those individuals are absolutely prohibited as well. Further, the judge said this, I will not, this is important to pay close attention to everyone. I will not impose restrictions on statements criticizing the government the Biden administration or the Department of Justice or statements that Trump believes this prosecution to be politically motivated. Okay, that means the judge grants him the ability to speak freely about those things. She's not putting a muzzle on him when it comes to those things. Oh, Donald Trump's a liar, wow, yeah. who could have figured? And she originally also barred Trump and all parties from making statements about the witnesses or potential witnesses in the case for obvious reasons. Okay, Donald Trump is a former president of the United States. When you put out statements targeting potential witnesses, it is witness intimidation. And so Trump can argue that this prosecution is politically motivated, the judge said. But he cannot disparage the prosecutor by calling him a thug or vilify and implicitly encourage violence against public servants who are simply doing their jobs. Now, after issuing that initial gag order, Judge Chutkin did temporarily place a pause on that gag order. So she issued it on the 16th, and then she implemented the pause on October 20th amid a complaint from Trump that the order was confusingly worded and broad. So, she, you know, good faith actor, she's like, all right, I'm gonna take what you say as a good faith concern. Take a look at this gag order and make sure that your concerns are, are dealt with. Now, he also requested that she keep it on hold while he asked a federal appeals court to basically throw it out altogether. And so this leads to the latest updates, okay? Chutkin agreed to reinstate the order after prosecutors cited Trump's recent comments about former chief of staff Mark Meadows, who, by the way, we recently got confirmation that Mark Meadows has flipped on Donald Trump. So that made Trump very angry. And he started targeting Mark Meadows. Trump citing an ABC oh, News report that Meadows had accepted immunity to testify. Two federal prosecutors said last week that such cooperation was for weaklings and cowards, and that any unfavorable testimony about him would have been a lie. Chutkin said this remark would plainly have cut against her order had it been in effect and for good reason. Um, so I can read you the full Truth Social post if you want. I don't think Mark Meadows would lie about the rigged and stolen 2020 presidential election merely for getting immunity against prosecution by deranged prosecutor Jack Smith. But when you really think about it, after being hounded like a dog for three years, uh, told you'll be going to jail for the rest of your life, your money and your family will be forever gone, and we're not at all interested in exposing those that did the rigging. If you say bad things about that terrible monster, Donald Trump, we won't put you in prison. You can keep your family and your wealth and perhaps you can make up some really horrible stuff about him. And it goes on and on, you guys can read the rest of it. So that apparently persuaded Chutkin to re-implement the gag order. Yeah, so a couple of obvious things here. So look, Donald Trump's a legendary liar. So. 
if Donald Trump is speaking, he's almost certainly lying. There are exceptions, and when we find the exceptions, we show them to you. Go, oh, look at this, that's actually something true that he said, and it's actually an interesting point that other people aren't making, right? And that happens from time to time. In fact, we might talk about one later in this program, okay? But here, of course, he's, oh, they're trying to shut me down, because I'm running against Joe Biden. The whole ruling has nothing to do with Joe Biden. He can say anything he wants about Joe Biden, he can say anything against his political opponents, etc. So. Uh, but his uh, followers never see the truth, never ever. Because uh, if you're mad at Donald Trump, you should be way more mad at right wing media. Because right wing media aids and abets his lies. They never tell you that he's lying, they never correct the record. They're always like, oh, yeah, poor Donald Trump. Oh, yeah, I can't believe they're doing a gag order where they won't let him run for president. Can I, liars, liars. Can I jump in on that real quick, Cenk? Because I, I came to the realization of something and it made me incredibly sad. It doesn't matter if you tell the truth, right? I don't know if it's because they've been lied to for so long by right wing media that now anyone who goes against that narrative is just not to be believed and has Trump derangement syndrome, right? That's like what yeah. they like to turn to. So when I was on the Patrick Bet David podcast, he asked about Trump and I said, look, I really value our liberal democracy and what Trump did in regard to the election violates something that I genuinely truly believe in, which is our liberal democracy. And I mean, the, the audience lost it over that. They were so oh. angry and they think I'm a liar and a grifter. And even though I had receipts, it didn't matter. And that's what it, it really makes me sad. I don't think that it's necessarily all Trump supporters, but it's a significant portion of them. <laughs> Wait till you see what they say about me. Yeah. Um, and that's because uh, I forcefully say things that are true and it drives them crazy. But to be fair to them, they've never heard the truth before. I know it sounds amazing to you if you don't live in their bubble. But in their bubble, Trump is right about everything and everyone in the, in the media that they listen to say that Trump is the poor, poor victim. And that Joe Biden stole the election and Hugo Chavez and Krakens and stuff. And they genuinely, genuinely, genuinely believe it. So when we enter that bubble and we say, sorry guys, but it's all a lie, that upsets their worldview, it rocks their world. And they they don't know what to do with it because it's so foreign to what they heard from the goddamn liars in right wing media. So that's actually the essence of the problem. Now in this particular case, look, and I get half of the disgruntlement, right? So the right wingers say, oh yeah, how come no one else in power is ever held accountable? That is true, and that is a giant problem for Democrats. So they're like, oh, okay, yeah, we're gonna hold Trump accountable. You're right, Donald Trump's a lifelong criminal. He committed these crimes, he's violating the gag orders. All that is clearly true, right? But I could point to a lot of people who are rich and powerful that the Democrats would never prosecute, including Eric Holder, Obama's attorney general, who said that the bankers were too big to jail. So like, if you're angry at the establishment, you are right. If you think Donald Trump is the answer and he's your savior, you are wrong. Donald Trump is just a bigger liar than those guys. So and that's a hard thing to pull off. And he's also acts like a mob boss because he's gotten away with this criminality his whole life. In fact, immediately after the gag order was re-implemented, he immediately violated it by going after Bill Barr, who's a potential witness in this case. Okay? Lifelong so criminal, he can't help himself. So he said this on a in a truth social post, which honestly in any other context I would be highly amused by, which is something that someone with Trump derangement syndrome would never say. Just wanna let you guys know that. Anyway, I called Bill Barr dumb, weak, slow moving, lethargic, gutless and lazy, a rhino who couldn't do the job. Remember, Donald Trump is the one who appointed him, <laughs> but nonetheless, he just didn't wanna be impeached which the radical left lunatics were preparing to do. I don't, I, Nobody was planning to do that. Yeah, I don't That's remember just his that. Imagination. Uh, I do, I was tough on him in the White House for good reason. So now this moron says about me to get even, his verbal skills are limited. He really didn't like that statement. Yeah, well it's because it's totally true. Well, that's one I haven't heard before. Oh, really? Oh my God, you've surrounded yourself with yes men. Tell that to the biggest political cow or, uh, crowds in the history of politics by far, Bill Barr is a loser. 
So look, it's unclear if he's gonna actually face any repercussions for violating the gag order. There have been other instances of him violating the gag order in the civil suit. There's a gag order in that suit, but since it's a civil suit, you know, he's been dealing with some fines that total $15,000, which is a drop in the bucket for him. But ex-Trump White House lawyer Ty Cobb commented on the reinstatement of the gag order for the election interference interference case. And he has a prediction that I actually think is um, crazy, but you might disagree with me. So let's watch. One other thing I wanted to ask you about just as a, as a quick follow here before we go on the, on the point about the gag order. What do you think is sure. next, right? I mean, so the gag order went away for nine days, it gets reinstated. He says these things about Bill Barr, what he got fined $10,000 for him. That's you know pennies, and no matter what his real wealth is, it's still pennies. Um, so what, 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 where does he end up on this? Well, the New York judge fined him ten thousand dollars. That's in a civil case. You know, that's not as consequential as Judge Chutkin's case. I think yep. Judge Chutkin, um, you know, prudently allowed Trump to try to persuade her to extend the gag order. Uh, she concluded, you know, on the basis of his conduct this week, not to do so. <laughs> and uh, I think she'll come in with a much heavier uh, uh, penalty, and ultimately, I think he'll, you know, spend a night or a weekend in jail. Wow. I think it's going to take that. I think it will take that to, you know, to stop him. Mr. Cobb, I thought you were smarter than this, Mr. Cobb. Like, wrong on both counts, if you ask me. Look, obviously, he's making a prediction, and I'm making a prediction. My prediction is he will not spend a single minute in jail. And even if he did, which is just inconceivable to me, he will learn no lessons from that. <laughs> come yeah. on, he's going to come out like, I don't know, like a wild animal that's just, that's been held captive and finally released. Can yeah. you imagine? Yeah, even if he was in jail for just one day. Uh, so uh, look, first of all, I think Ty Cobb should not have taken a break for making all those toys. Christmas is around the corner, he's never gonna make it. Or fried chicken. Okay, hey, uh, fair. <laughs> uh, now, look guys, uh, another aside by the way, before I get to the final point. You know, Trump is constantly calling people morons, losers, etc. Now, Democrats say that if you do things like that, it's disqualifying. I mean, it's so unprofessional. You can't do that in politics. Except for the fact that Donald Trump already won the presidency once, and he nearly won it a second time. So maybe Democrats, you don't know what the hell you're doing when it comes to politics. You think that everybody went to Yale? And you speak in ways that normal people don't understand, and you go with your arrogant elitist attitude. And then this guy comes and goes, That guy's a moron, a loser, weak, etc. And people like him because he speaks like a normal person. Mm -hmm. Everyone in democratic politics is constantly wrong and can't see straight. Now, back to MAGA being wrong and not being able to see straight because they're both in bubbles, and those bubbles create alternate realities, okay? Now, for Trump, I want to be clear, I don't think the gag order should apply to him calling Bill Barr loser, weak, moron, etc. He does those kind of insults all the time. That Bill Barr is perfectly familiar with it. That's not going to intimidate him, etc. Right. I think the gag order should only be for things that to are on the edge of threatening violence. Agreed. Right? Yeah, I agree. So, for example, when he said about Michael Cohen, he said it in passing, but it's important. He said, uh, "It's if he keeps going like this, it's not going to end well for him." <laughs> Now that's a massive problem, okay? Especially given that Donald Trump supporters have in the past tried to murder people that he criticizes, right? So that there's a long history of that. They, in fact, they rushed the building looking to murder his vice president. So that's not all of his supporters, but there are enough of his supporters that have acted in crazed ways like that that the judge is right to be concerned. But don't be concerned about insults, be concerned about threats of violence. And intimidation. Mm -hmm. So the gag order makes sense for that, but not just for regular insults, if you ask me. I totally agree with you on that. And, uh, you know, as look, you're right. Trump is known for insulting people who go against him in any way. The whole point of the gag order is to protect individuals, whether it's court staff or the potential witnesses of intimidation by the individual being prosecuted. So as long as there's no intimidation involved, I think the Former president should be free to speak, um, even if it includes insults toward those who might be potential witnesses. Yeah, and and by the way, here I'll end on this. I actually disagree with Judge Chutkin on one thing she said. She said if the gag order was in place, what he said about Mark Meadows would have violated the gag order. 
I, I don't think that should have violated the gag order. He didn't even say that Mark Meadows is a weakling and a coward. He said if he turned evidence, mm -hmm. he's a weakling and a coward. He's still in his delusional mind thinking that Mark Meadows isn't you know, cooperating with prosecutors, which he certainly is. So if he had said instead, Mark Meadows better watch himself if he you know, works with prosecutors, then yes, that's a massive violation of the gag order. So let's make sure that we're not going too far. We need a prosecution, not a persecution of Donald Trump or anyone else. If you enjoy this video, that's because of our members. They make us independent, they make us strong, and they make us honest. Become a member today by hitting the join button below.